Hey, it's Angry Bill for Pre-Hospital Wisdom. Uh, EKGs are a complex uh, part of being a paramedic. Uh, it's also an important part. It's something that we're expected to know. It relates back to EMS history. Uh, it's one of the reasons that uh, paramedics sort of exist, and it's one of those things that I especially love. So let me teach you my process, the way that I teach it, um, and stay tuned to the end for the shortcut process. So my name's Bill. Uh, I've been teaching EKG interpretation in paramedic schools and conferences and stuff like that since about 2005. I've kind of um, narrowed down how I end up teaching EKG interpretation. And it's a lot like trauma in that trauma scenes and EKGs can be both uh, really complex and complicated uh, uh, parts of our job. With a trauma patient struck by a car, we know where to begin. We know each step that we have to do. We stop massive bleeding, we, we control the airway, we you know, move on from there. It would be a wrong thing to walk right up and, and start splinting an open tib-fib fracture uh, for someone with a tire track across their, their belly, for example. Uh, it's the same thing with EKGs. Going through it in a systematic way takes down this big massive process of, of interpret the EKG and shortens it down into simple, identifiable, answerable questions that when you're done with the whole process you have the entire answer. So my process that I teach people comes from uh, Dr. Ken Grauer's book that uh, I initially started teaching out of. Uh, added some uh, uh, extra little bits here and there but for the most part it's Dr. Grauer's pattern. What's your general impression? Rate, rhythm, intervals, axis, hypertrophy, infarct. Rate, rhythm, intervals, axis, hypertrophy, infarct. Take all that data, correlate it to the patient, and you're finished. Go from there. With general impression, what I'm asking is, what are the two words that you think of when this EKG is popped in front of you? Oh shit, fine general impression. Not bad, fine general impression. Oh look, it's wide, or oh, that's really fast. Whatever your general impression is, there's almost no wrong answer. Next, rate. What's the rate? Now, there's a whole bunch of ways to look at the rate. We're not going to get into the details of EKG interpretation. If you want that, make sure and comment or send me an email. So for rate, what I will say is the easiest way to get the rate is the number at the top left of the monitor. It's not too bad. It's also at the top of most uh, printed 12 leads. Rhythm. So there's four rhythm questions. What the end result I'm looking for is what's the name of the rhythm? What's the basic EKG EMT level name of this rhythm? Sinus, AFib, stuff like that. The way that I teach that is, are there P waves? Is the QRS wide or narrow? Is it regular, irregular? And is anything single? Are there single waveforms or is everything married together? Based on those four questions, we should be able to get a good guess as to uh, whether we're dealing with sinus or AFib or, or VTAC or whatever it is. What's next is intervals. There's only three intervals I need to worry about. The PR interval, the QRS duration, and the QT interval. This is a point where if there's something abnormal, I need to explain it. So for example, a long PR interval is likely to be a first degree AV block. A long QRS duration, greater than 0.12 seconds, three small boxes, uh, I need to explain. So I need to explain, is that a ventricular uh, complex? Is that a bundle branch block? Is that aberrant conduction? Uh, whatever's going on, explain abnormal findings here. Pure interval, QRS duration, QT interval. Next up is axis determination. All I'm looking for is a quadrant or a quintrant because there's really five. Left axis, normal axis, right axis, and no man's land or right shoulder axis, extreme right axis, whatever you want to call it. Left axis is divided into pathologic and physiologic left axis. Anything abnormal needs explained. Fascicular blocks or uh, stuff like that. That's it, move on. What's the axis? Following axis, we look at hypertrophy. What I'm really looking for is chamber enlargement. So there's four chambers. I look for signs of left atrial abnormality, right atrial abnormality, left ventricular hypertrophy, and right ventricular hypertrophy. Really, right ventricular hypertrophy is almost impossible to diagnose from an EKG, so I shortened down the criteria on that and increased my hit rate by actually looking for pulmonary disease pattern. Finally, infarct. Infarct patterns can be divided into another mnemonic. Q waves, R wave progression, ST segments, and T waves. Uh, are there Q waves? What I'm looking for is pathologic Q waves. The R wave progression across the V leads. ST segment elevation, ST segment depression, and T waves. 
These are usually fairly easy. They usually jump out and kind of catch your eye a little bit, although some infarct patterns can be subtle. So based on that information, once I have the rate, rhythm, intervals, axis, hypertrophy, infarct, I can take that and correlate that to the patient. That's an important part that we don't always get with cold reads. So make sure to institute that into your practice. The exact same squiggles on an EKG paper can mean something completely different from a 70-year-old woman with chest pain versus a 17-year-old male having a pre-football physical. Um, the exact same squiggles mean different things. So correlate it to your patient's presentation, their complaint, um, uh, the reason for taking an EKG and all those things. So let's admit that even explaining it took way too long let alone all the details that go into rate, rhythm, intervals, axis, hypertrophy, infarct. So what's the real secret trick? When you're dealing with a patient, you have to keep in mind there's other stuff you need to do. IVs need started, hospitals need notified, demographics need collected. That's like bare minimum stuff, right? You need time to sit there and think about the call. You need to be able to run your call and sit in there staring slack-jawed at a piece of paper trying to figure out the axis with two thumbs or whatever it is. That's, that's perhaps not the best use of your time. We need to prioritize your synapses. We need to prioritize your hands and your time. The process that I teach to novice interpreters, here it is. Here's the secret. 50, 120, potassium, MI. Is the rate slower than 50? Is the rate faster than 120? Are there signs of hyperkalemia? And is there signs of ischemia and infarction? If you answer no to all four of those questions, set the EKG down, the answer to the patient's problem is not on there. Do something more productive. 50, 120, potassium, MI. If you answer no to those four questions, you can set the paper down. The answer is not on there. Axis isn't going to dictate your treatment. Chamber enlargement outside of left ventricular hypertrophy being a STEMI mimic isn't going to dictate your treatment or what's going on with that patient. So as a novice interpreter, it's okay to not go through the entire process. That's okay, I'm giving you permission to not do something. But as your career progresses, I need you to start re-adding some of those skills, some of those bits of knowledge. Start re-adding in uh, fascicular blocks, start re-adding um, bundle branch blocks, start re-adding more subtle STEMIs, uh, OMI patterns, STEMI mimics, stuff like that. Don't settle to have a whole career at 50, 120 potassium MI. That's for novice interpreters that feel like they're drowning. It's okay to start adding more and more and more and progress your career. So. To recap, general impression, rate, rhythm, intervals, axis hypertrophy, infarct, clinical correlation to the patient, but really 5120 potassium MI. What do you think of that? What pattern do you use? What pattern were you taught? Uh, make sure and let me know down in the comments. Uh, click over here uh, for another video. Click over here uh, for the channel page and all videos. Make sure to like and subscribe and do all that YouTube stuff that you know about. Till next time, this is Angry Bill. Stay safe.